Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we're going to be conducting an independent and hopefully fun and entertaining ammo test. Um, you guys probably recall the recent video that Chad and I did on the top five carry rounds. Uh, well, I got a call from uh, Fort Scott Munitions and I, just full disclosure here, I just want to let you guys know. They contacted me and they're like, hey, we want you to check out our Tumble Upon Impact uh, 9 millimeter ammo and they, they load a bunch of different cartridges as well. But they asked me what my favorite caliber was for carry. I told them nine millimeter. And they were like, hey, you know, do you guys want to test our ammo against everybody else's stuff? And uh, I was like, well, sure, why not? So they offered to send out the blocks, send out the ammo, and allow us to conduct a completely independent uh, test on their ammunition versus some of our favorite carry loads. Now, we've actually done a lot of extensive testing on carry ammunition over the years. And uh, the FBI protocol, calls for about six or seven different tests to be performed. In order to perform every single one of those tests in this video, we would have to have about 70 blocks of gel. And that's just completely unrealistic for today's test. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use the FBI test of the uh, clothing penetration test, since that's probably gonna be a little bit more indicative of what a civilian is gonna run into in a personal defense situation. Some of the other FBI protocol calls for uh, plywood penetration, auto glass penetration, sheet metal, uh, it calls for uh, drywall and a few other mediums, and those are to simulate barriers and things like that. We've already done a good bit of testing with some of the rounds here that we're gonna be showing you today, and we found uh, some of them are a little bit more barrier blind than others. Barrier blindness is kind of a big thing with especially law enforcement ammunition, which needs to perform in a wide variety of different applications, okay? For today's test, the clothing test, what it's meant to simulate is shooting at, obviously, a clothed person, but what the clothing also is supposed to do is offer some form of resistance to the hollow cavity. A lot of projectiles have some form of a hollow cavity, and it's supposed to clog that cavity up and see if it'll still penetrate after going through some type of medium that could either close up the cavity or clog the cavity, which basically make its ability to expand the projectile uh, limited. Okay, now you're still getting shot, it's still projectile passing through you, but part of that FBI protocol is to see if the projectile will retain its weight, if it will have a really good permanent uh, cavity, and if, if the bullet won't break apart and if it'll actually expand. They look at the expanded diameter, weight retention, penetration. All of those are things that we're gonna to try to test today for you with the clothing standard. We've got 10% FBI clear ballistics gel. Uh, so this is from clear ballistics. And basically we take a little torch here and we glaze the outside of it and get it nice and clear so we can see what's going on. Now uh, for the penetration testing of the clothing, we have one layer of standard t-shirt material cotton, one heavy dress layer of 100% cotton uh, t-shirt, or basically it looks like flannel, but it's, uh, it's just a cotton t-shirt, a layer of fleece, and a layer of denim. All of these are courtesy of my wife who raided her closet and was able to get me all this stuff. So thanks uh, to my wife for letting me cut up some of her clothing because uh, she, she sacrifices for the channel, right? So anyway, well, she's married to me, so of course she sacrifices a lot just as it is. But anyway, getting back to the test. So the rounds that we're gonna be testing today, and uh, we tried to keep the weight ranges on these rounds kind of similar, just to make the penetration and honestly, just the, the sanctity of the test a little bit more fair. We're gonna be shooting 115 grain spear gold dot, which is a proven performer. We're gonna be shooting Federal HST 124 grain jacketed hollow point, also a proven performer. Lehigh Defense, Extreme Defense Plus P 90 grain. Now this round right here, I've got some high hopes for. We've done a lot of testing on Lehigh's projectiles and I don't think that we've popped too many of the Extreme Defense projectiles in jail just yet. So this will be a little bit new for us because they did, uh, they did change the, the characteristic of this projectile over from the extreme penetrator to the extreme defense. It's a slightly different projectile with a slightly different shape and slightly different flu flutes cut on the projectile. We've got critical defense 115 grain FTX 9 millimeter from Hornady, also a proven performer. In our barrier blindness testing, this um, projectile performed the best. 
all right, in the auto, it, it, and particularly well in the auto glass, drywall, and in the uh, plywood penetration test. The Hornady Critical Defense did the best out of all the rounds that we tested for barrier blindness. Now for weight retention, uh, penetration, they're all relatively similar, but I do feel like the Hornady gets a slight leg up for its barrier blindness. Now last but not least, Ford Scott, uh, there's a relatively new company. They're doing a lot of really cool stuff. And we thought it would be fair to just give these guys an honest shake versus the competition because they contacted me. They wanted to know if we would test their ammunition. And uh, I really like, they seem like a really nice bunch of guys with some cool stuff going on. So I told them, absolutely, send me the ammo and we'll try to conduct this test. So Ford Scott has their tumble upon impact. So where this projectile differs from the other ones that we're going to be testing today is that this projectile is actually designed to yaw when it enters uh, you know, a ballistic medium. So the whole idea being that a yawing bullet, a tumbling bullet will not penetrate as far. And the idea is that it will cause some very devastating wound cavities. Uh, I have actually looked at some of the previous gel shots of this stuff, and it does some pretty crazy things when it goes into a piece of ballistics gel. Now, full disclosure here, I do want to mention, the clear ballistics gel is not my typical preferred medium for doing this. Uh, I like to use uh, the Dr. Coat ballistic gel. Uh, it's a 10% bloom. Now, that's the type of gel you have to keep cold and everything like that. It's more of a, FBI, a true FBI spec gelatin and really gives a great result. The clear ballistics gel, I just want to offer full disclosure because we have used this stuff a lot. It's excellent gelatin. The cool thing about it, you don't have to keep it uh, cold. So as long as you don't get it out in melting temperatures, you don't have to refrigerate it, which is super handy. But the permanent cavities that the clear ballistics gel gives are a little smaller than they really should be across the board. However, because we're using clear ballistics gel to test all of these rounds, it'll be a fair comparison because we're keeping those results consistent. So without further uh, boredom here, let's get after it. We're gonna pop some gel. Uh, you saw the standards for the clothing, so assume that throughout the entire video, the clothing is gonna be exactly in the layers that I mentioned. Uh, standard t-shirt, heavy cotton dress shirt, uh, fleece, and denim in that order. So I'm not gonna bother repeating that for the rest of the video. The firearm that we're gonna be using today is a full-size uh, CZ SP01 Phantom with a 4.6 inch barrel. This is a nine millimeter, uh, probably one of my favorite handguns in the world. And I love this handgun so much. We were a little bit torn on what we were gonna use for the handgun for this test. Because I know this is a full-size handgun and some people may not wanna carry a full-size you know, to really conduct this test a really, really super properly, we would have to go back with like a subcompact and then look at the difference between the short barrel and the long barrel. But the way we're gonna run this is, we're gonna assume that if we have some performance anomaly that's negative in this, like say that one of the rounds doesn't do very well, then we have to assume that with a 4.6 inch barrel, if it doesn't do well, then you can pretty much surmise that out of a shorter barrel, it's gonna perform even worse. So we wanna give each round a fair shake out of a, a relatively full length barrel uh, for today's test. Um, I think that pretty much covers our standards for the test. Let's go ahead and get after it. This is gonna be fun. All right, send in the first round down range, guys. This is our uh, Hornady FTX. We're gonna be shooting it from a distance of 10 feet. This is a definitely personal defense range. All right. This is the round that was the most barrier blind in our initial testing. Here we go. Nice center hit. And one thing I will say is those layers of clothing, we were joking about it earlier, like, man, you gotta be hot. That's, uh, that's quite a bit of uh, material to go through. And then we also doubled up our blocks just in case we get through an entire block. Let's go have a look. All right, guys, that's pretty much in line with what we expected to see out of the Hornady. Uh, we got 12 and a half inches of penetration. Uh, definitely not bad. FBI protocol calls for 12, 12 to 16 inches of penetration uh, is about the Goldilocks zone that they prefer the penetration to be in. We did have a catch block just in case it got through. Um, that's a lot of clothing to go through, and that's still an impressive amount of uh, penetration. And like I said, with the clear ballistics gel, our, our permanent cavity is not super crazy looking. Um, that's just sort of the nature of this gel. It probably looks a little bit more impressive when you see the slow-mo shot and you can see the amount of disruption. Uh, this is a six by six by 16 inch block in terms of size. So when you see that expansion in the slow-mo, you should be able to get an idea of what's really happening there. I know that there are some arguments out there 
as to how effective of a, a, a factor you can look into a temporary cavity as opposed to a permanent cavity. I know that some rounds have a really crazy temporary cavity and you have to assume like, man, that cavity opening up, if it disrupts organs, if it potentially damages organs, that surely that disruption could cause uh, you know, a more lethal wound than a round that has less temporary cavitation. However, most people tend to really look at the permanent cavity. That's really where the rubber meets the road. So take that for what you will, and we're gonna cut the round out. I got my little Mora here, shameless plug for Mora. So I can cut more bullets out. We're gonna get this guy out of here and have a look. And of course, I didn't bring my eyeball pluckers with me. That's normally what I use to reach in there and pluck them out, but I don't like using my fingers because those petals can be a little bit sharp. Ah, uh, yeah. So look, if any of you guys ever get wounded and you need me to dig a bullet out of you, there you go, you know I can do it. All right, so we see that looks like the bullet retained a positive amount of weight, and then there's our little polymer tip that was right there with it. The polymer tip basically prevents the nose from clogging up with particulates and causing the bullet not to expand. That's one of the big points on the FTX. Let's move on and uh, we're gonna keep going down the line. I always love plugging a little bit of gel with some bullets, this is so much fun. All right, moving on, Federal HST 124 grain, standard pressure. Out of all the rounds we have today, this is the heavy hitter of the bunch in terms of weight. All right, same everything. We've turned our catch block around and we're reusing the other block as a catch block, but if this is any indication, it shouldn't go through one block, but we'll see. Here we go. And we got our chrono running. Ooh, that uh, looked like it walloped it pretty good. Let's have a look. All right, guys, no surprise there on the Federal. Uh, HST is a very proven carry round. And uh, it's, it's, it's a tough thing to stack up against, you know. Our penetration was excellent. Uh, it did go 18 and a half inches into the gelatin. So it went all the way through one block after going through our uh, clothing. And it went into our catch block. As far as I know, I'm pretty sure on, on the FBI spec that that would be a no-no. Uh, they don't like to go over 18 inches on the penetration. But me, I like penetration. I want to go as deep in that gel as I possibly can. I want to get right in there. I want, to, I want to go all the way through and I want to hit the bottom, all right? But here's the thing. <laughs> They're laughing at me. That was a bad joke. But here's the thing though. Sometimes, sometimes you don't want the round to penetrate as much. And then also barrier blindness is a thing. So, uh, you know, so far in these two tests, what they show us is that the Horn Daddy ammunition if you're looking for barrier blindness in our tests, yeah, you don't get quite as much penetration, but if that's what your specific need calls for, then there you go. So there's two different extremes there. Now, granted, this was a little bit heavier of a bullet or at standard pressure. Let's go ahead and dig the projectile out and have a look. So 18 and a half inches of penetration, which if you ask me, is not a problem, okay? But again, it depends on who you ask and what your needs are you know, I live out in the middle of nowhere in the country, so me, I'm not concerned about a round over penetrating a little bit, you know? And when you look at a hunting situation, guys, if you hunt deer, would you be okay with the, with the deer getting shot and the bullet not going all the way through the deer? No, if you're shooting a deer in the lungs, you want the bullet to go all the way through, 100% pass through. Okay, if the bullet expands, great. If it doesn't expand, that's probably not as good, but still okay if it goes all the way through and, and really leaks that deer out and bleeds the deer out. That's my perspective. I mean, I've killed a lot of game with various uh, rifle rounds. Um, I know we're talking handguns here. All right. W looking at the projectile, we can see from the top of the gel that the, the projectile did catch a good bit of denim material, it looks like. Let's have a look. And then obviously we're gonna go through and weigh all of these and uh, have a look, guys. Let's just get down in there and get that bullet out. Now remember, if you need a field surgeon, you guys just let me know. Not only can I put it in there, I can also get it out. All right, let's see. Get that out of there. Oh yeah. 
Oh, this is strangely morbid. I need to go get my eyeball pluckers. Okay. I'm not going to pick any of that out of there. We're going to weigh this later to see what type of weight retention, but I would imagine, I mean, looking in here, it did drag a little bit of uh, particulates from the clothing through the wound channel. The permanent cavity looks pretty good for clear ballistic gelatin, not bad. Excellent penetration. Looks really wicked on the slow-mo. And uh, we did get some of the material carry through. Let's move on. Enough toilet humor. Let's go. 115 grain spear gold dot. Also a great performer. This is standard pressure 115 gold dot. Same everything, same blocks. Actually, well, we got fresh blocks. Same gun. Let's go. Nice. Put a good wallop on it. Let's go have a look. All right, guys. Color me impressed. Spear gold dot. I mean, look, guys. It's a proven performer. 115 grain standard pressure gold dot. Yeah, buddy. 17 inches of penetration. And we got this crazy explosion going on in there when it went in. That was crazy. I guess it's just the fluid dynamics and all the scientific junk just in there doing its thing. And it just don't know what to do. So it just combusts spontaneously, son, inside the wound cavity. Yeah, really cool stuff. All right, so we went through an entire 16-inch gel block. Uh, the permanent cavity, a little lackluster compared to the HST and even compared to the, uh, to the horn daddy. All right, so a uh, little bit, you know, a little lackluster on the permanent cavity, but excellent penetration, and it looks like our projectile held together really well, uh, like we showed earlier, 17 inches of penetration. So uh, certainly in the Goldilocks zone, and then it just caught barely into the catch block here. And I'm trying not to butcher these blocks up too bad because I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna reuse this block for the next one. But let's get our projectile out and just have a look here. <laughs> Hold him still where I can cut this bullet out of him. <laughs> Ooh, you talk about pain. All right. There is our projectile or spear gold dot. Looks really nice. Looks like uh, held together just fine. I don't see any particulates or any kind of separation of any of the components uh, coming apart in the gel. We did obviously get some uh, clothing drawn through the wound channel. Not bad. Uh, I would say positive co uh, contender. Uh, Spear Gold Dot's been in production a long time. It's a proven performer. Really no mystery there. Uh, we're going to move on to the Lehigh. So now we're getting into a little bit more of the Devil May Care loadings. Let's do it. All right, guys, moving on down the line, we got some Lehigh 90 grain extreme defense. This is the plus P. Whew. This is a smoking little devil. If Mike Cyrus had anything to do with these, they're probably no loaded like nuclear hot. Uh, but this is a slightly different projectile shape and design than some of the extreme penetrators that we've tested in the uh, past. Extreme penetrator and extreme defense are two different projectile designs. So let's see how the 90 grain stacks up in the nine millimeter. Oh, I, lo <laughs> I love these bullets. They're neat, man. All right, here we go. Wow, that, uh, that round kicked a little bit. Let's uh, see what happens, shall we? All right, guys, Lehigh, yeah, performed pretty dang good, okay? We got just under 18 inches of penetration, which is still sort of in that Goldilocks zone, um, but really, really nice. 90 grain bullet got in there and, and made a little miniature explosion again, which is always so much fun to watch. Um, so the big difference here between the Lehigh versus a hollow point. So just so you guys basically know for the uninitiated, and even if I can consider myself somewhat initiated, these are just my observations, but essentially what happens is when a hollow point enters a material like ballistic gelatin or human body or an animal's body or any type of fluid, let's just say, because we're, we're primarily made up of water, right? You get these weird fluid dynamics going on and what happens is the air pocket that is created in that projectile when it enters, it has to go somewhere. It has to displace somehow. And believe it or not, the gel is such a dense medium and it, it's really tough. You know, a, a animal's body is a tough medium, right? It has to go somewhere. So what it does is it expands. That air pocket has to go somewhere and it begins to open up 
and it opens up and it opens up and it opens up and it and it it has to go somewhere so that's what those fluid dynamics do the difference between a hollow point causing a disruption and getting in there and just opening up the difference between that and the lehigh projectile is the lehigh is a turned solid and what happens is it does not deform at all okay let's let's pick this bullet out and have a look all of the projectiles that we're testing all have a weak and a strong point. What the Lehigh does is instead of deforming and causing an air pocket that has to go somewhere, these flutes that are cut in there disrupt, okay? And those flutes are always there. So that means that in our barrier penetration testing, the Lehigh projectiles hold up great because they don't deform and the ability of this projectile to perform doesn't depend on them deforming. So that is the, the one kind of setback between a traditional hollow point. When you look at the Hornady FTX, it kind of falls somewhere a little bit in the middle because it's got that polymer tip in there that's supposed to resist it filling up with stuff, but that polymer tip is soft enough to allow it to give and it's going to go somewhere and those fluids are going to open up that hollow cavity. This provides those fluid dynamics to occur because of the flutes that are pre-cut into the projectile. It's the shape of the projectile. Some people will argue that it's not quite as good, but my thing is, I mean, that's a pretty wicked permanent cavity, and that permanent cavity, before it really starts to shrink, extends into a good solid, I mean, gosh, uh, 12 and a half, 13 inches of gelatin, and it's still causing that disruption of the fluid material. I know it's a not an incredibly scientific explanation, but that's the way I observe it. Um, so we got one more round to test. So we're going to give uh, Ford Scott their uh, their moment to shine here. Let's see what this uh, projectile is all about. This is the first time I've shot a projectile that is designed to tumble like this. So I'm really curious to see what happens. Let's do it. All right, guys. Fort Scott munitions, 115 grain, tumble upon impact. T U I, not T M I. TUI. That's got a really odd bullet shape. That's really not something you see every day. All right, let's give this thing a fair shake. Everything else is the same, same gun, uh, same denim, same everything. I want to mention very quickly uh, before we perform this shot that I did individually inspect every piece of our clothing medium and each piece of clothing was shot by every projectile in a, in a different place each time and every bullet has passed through every bit of clothing as planned so there's there's no uh nobody skating by on that okay all right here we go fort scott now i noticed that the recoil impulse was a little light on that it didn't feel like it kicked very hard we'll see what happened all right guys so pretty interesting result here with the fort scott munitions uh 115 tumble upon impact it definitely tumbled upon impact, all right? It went through our clothing material and then uh, penetrated 22 inches of ballistic shell. So we got rock bottom in this ballistic shell. I'm talking right in there, baby. Uh, went in really nice and uh, had a very visceral, temporary, and permanent cavity. I would say out of all the projectiles we tested, the permanent cavity is not only among the longest cavities, but also the largest in diameter. So that's a very, very interesting result there. And because this round is designed to tumble, we know because of the fact that the projectile is base forward, we know that the round tumbled. That's a unique characteristic in a round that tumbles in a wound cavity. It'll always go base forward. You notice just about any other carry round is always gonna stay nose forward. Uh, that's just a characteristic of the way those projectiles work. This round is designed to tumble. One observation that I made about this particular projectile that I, I want to kind of share is it bears a very stark resemblance to the 455 Webley. When you look at the old school Webley ammunition, it has a very unique ogive. And I almost wonder if maybe they bias the weight of the projectile more forward in the nose so that it tends to want to dive and, and yaw the minute that it goes into the cavity. Um, the only way to know that would be to, you know, I don't know. I don't really know how we do that unless unless the shape of this bullet uh, is a little different than I think in terms of what's down in the case. However, that is a very interesting shape of projectile and I would imagine they chose this projectile specifically 
because of that ability. But it does bear some pretty strong resemblance to old school Webley ammunition. Now, is that to say that the British had it figured out a long time ago? Or maybe I'm wrong, but it does bear that very close resemblance to old school Webley ammo, which uh, is pretty cool. It's unique. I would imagine that the shape of this projectile also equates to some really reliable feeding. Um, I, I could not see how that projectile is not going to uh, enter a, a feed ramp or chamber without any kind of issue. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. You know, we wanted to give this round a fair shake uh, and we wanted to be fair and show Ford Scott last because uh, we wanted everybody to see the other rounds that we were testing and to see that we were just trying to go about this in a methodical manner. Guys, we're not, we're not trying to put any one round down. Guys, all of the rounds that we showed off in this video can all have their place in, in a particular situation. It really just depends on what you're looking for. Barrier blindness, well, we haven't tested the Ford Scott for barrier blindness. We haven't tested it in auto glass, uh, plywood. We haven't tested it in drywall. Uh, any of that type of stuff. So maybe that's something we can look at in a future video because a lot of the other rounds we tested, we have tested uh, in some of the other FBI protocol uh, performance testing. So maybe Ford Scott needs to be put through an entire battery of tests to see where it stacks up for barrier blindness compared to some of the other rounds. Now we'll tell you in our testing, the Lehigh is another solid. Both the Lehigh and the Ford Scott are both solids. So they're gonna behave a lot differently when it comes to barrier blindness, when there's not as much to get in the way or deform the bullet, and there's no chance of a hollow opening in the cavity of the nose of the bullet closing and not performing well, you're not gonna run into that issue quite as much. So I guess the big question would be, does this bullet begin to tumble after it goes through some form of a barrier, or is it only when it enters a very fluid dynamic type of environment as opposed to a physical barrier. That's something that's probably best uh, suited for a future video. We just wanted the results to kind of speak for themselves. Guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. We love doing these types of tests. I will never turn down an opportunity to plug some gel with some bullets and see what's going on because where the rubber meets the road is the science behind what bullets do when they hit things. And guys, remember, science does not care about your feelings. Science doesn't care about anything but the facts and the results, and you can't deny the way that the results went in this particular video. Every round that we showed would be perfectly at home in a self-defense pistol and a self-defense environment. Some may be a little bit better than others, but all of the bullets that we tested today performed beautifully, and I would not hesitate using any of them to protect myself, no problem. I just think that it's cool, you know, Ford Scott wanted to be fairly compared uh, to the rest of the big players out there, so we thought that we would do that. Um, so really cool. Uh, you know, maybe in a future video we'll do a complete battery of testing for Ford Scott on this particular round just to see how it goes. Thank you very much uh, for watching today's video. I appreciate all of our Patreon supporters, all the folks that support us by purchasing man cans. You guys are awesome. If you love this content, consider purchasing a man can or maybe donating a few bucks on Patreon. All of those funds go right back into supporting our channel and allowing us to take on fun projects. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Many more on the way. See you next time.